Uh, it's the morning. Hello, YouTubers. This is the Nubifier. I'm still working through the panels to provide updates. With regards to the panel titled Ship Talk, the over one hour long show discussed the 400i, the Liberator, and the BMM, and then we got some future concepts. The other ones have been done before, and the future concepts are just that. I might talk about it later. However, I'd ask you to go check out the two reviews that I've already done for the two first ships, but today we're going to look at the BMM specifically. It's a super early concept with practically nothing really concrete except for what was said in the past by Ben Lesnick, a picture from like seven years ago and then another picture from two years ago. And now today, damn. Today we got a dump from John Crew, Ben Curtis and Paul Jones. So I wanted to triage this subject before some of the others, but stay tuned, I will get to them. Here we go. 34 minutes into the ship talk panel, they began to talk about the BMM they acknowledged that it's been years, but they said that they've secretly been working on it on and off. The Defender set the style guide, and that allowed them to define the BMM a little bit better. The original geometry and cargo capability was legacy and needed to be completely rescaled. The market and hangar have also been defined. Paul Jones commented that the decision to add the Defender hangar really scaled the ship up. The Defender is surprisingly large, even when landed. He said that by deciding what size the market and bridge needed to be, that set the frame and they could work out filling out the space with more care. They had already scaled it up three years ago, but bam, the Defender truly forced this thing to become huge. If you bought it at the original price, bravo. Pure speculation for me is if this releases like the more modern thinking, it will be a capital ship? I don't know. It's, it's massive. The hangar is on top and it fits the folded Defender nicely. Paul said that the Banu love to take technology from others, which allows them to depart a little bit from standard. The front still has its pair of size 8 cannons. John said that all weapons on this ship are intended to tuck away. And then Paul said that pretty much every surface can move or animate. There's a top mounted twin size 5 man turret inside the shark tail, which seems to have a good 360 view. The shark tail covers in. There are a pair of point defense turrets mounted midship top another pair mounted on the bottom, and then two more remote turrets on the belly. Ben said that it quickly became a challenge to not let the size get out of hand. They needed to plan folding wings just so that it would be able to fit on the largest of large pads. The paddle or foot in the concept needed to have a function according to Chris or he was going to ax it. Paul considered that it could be part of the fuel scooping mechanism and it also transforms to the marketplace entrance. Paul wants this to be the red carpet entrance with banners and cloth coverings. The real idea of the bazaar with holographic posters telling the buyer what's on sale. John said that the cargo bay was never really fleshed out during the original concept, even saying that during meetings, some confirmed that it was internal, some confirmed that it was external, and some confirmed that it was underslung. The cargo is confirmed now as internal after playing with that idea of containers cradled slung below. There's now a single platform that lowers below, positioned in front of the market entrance. They spoke about styles and textures. The skin in its current state is ornate and beautiful, similar to the Defender. Folds in the surface add details with gold inlay, line work and materials. All of this elevate the alien feel. The before and after pictures for the interior are actually quite shocking. This is the first time that you can truly detect what they've been saying about its size. The trade area is three levels in height, the cargo space needed to be shifted to another location. There are a pair of elevators to get around and the interior, despite being inside, will be polished, organic and grand. To appeal to a wider range of buyers, Paul did specify that they had toned down the pure creature style interior of the Defender when transitioning over to the BMM. They want to cater to a wider audience. John confirmed that two sets of four shops on two floors for a total of eight with a catwalk and an open space. It looks to me like they literally concepted a shopping mall feel, but inside this ship. They confirmed that the negotiating room will be grand with a gigantic table and that's remained. John said that his team and narrative had the most back and forth to ensure that the physical ship made sense with what was known about the Banu. Trading meetings can last for weeks, so it made sense to deck out this negotiating room space with luxury and inviting geometry. Paul said that Banu values the display of wealth in this room, so expect it to be a centerpiece of the ship with a clear view of the cargo bay. Everything in the staterooms for the guests are well appointed but one level down from the main rooms. Every corner of the ship has something to look at. They demoed the concept of the engine room. They said it's basically three stories tall. 
and they're playing with the idea that the engine will be physically rotating while in operation. The cargo space has grapple cranes on the ceiling, but it's very early days, so the plan might change, and they reminded us that because you can see the cargo room from the negotiation room, you'll be able to see all this movement happen. John confirmed that the number of 2800 SU is the target. The concept for the bridge is tall and wide with stairs that lead up to the flight deck. It's fun to see how big you can think when the interior space is all laid out and it needs to be allocated. And then they confirmed that work will begin shortly, but that doesn't really define anything about the time of release. So I guess we'll have to see if it pops up on the roadmap. That's it. Crazy ship. Like seriously, I'm, I'm actually very impressed. And I may have gone an unmelted mine from my buyback list. I appreciate your support. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Please share the video. These do take a bit of time to put together. It's not a lot of work, but it's fun. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse. Thank you.